Last night, a two-part documentary on Benjamin Franklin premiered on PBS. It follows the founding father's multifaceted, complicated life and his role in building America. Joining us right now is Ken Burns. He's the documentary filmmaker behind this and so many other biographical films that we've all loved over the years. Also, Walter Isaacson, an advisor on this project and an advisor, advisory partner at Perella Weinberg, also a CNBC contributor. And gentlemen, welcome. Um, we spent the entire commercial break talking about this beforehand. I think we're going to spend the breaks after this talking about this because <laughs> Benjamin Franklin is one of the most fascinating subjects on the planet. And as much as you know about him, it's never enough. You think That's of all right. the things he did, from being a diplomat, from being a founding father, signing the Declaration of Independence uh, and the, the Constitution, a scientist, an inventor, a writer. He created the first public library. He founded UPenn. Um, I could go on and on and on. But, uh, Walter, why don't you jump in, because you know so much about him, why you focused on him, what you found most amazing. And have you ever found another person like him? No, not at all. I think that the reason Ken Barnes and I wanted to do this is that he's the founding father we most need right now. He's the most inventive of the founding fathers. He understands how to connect technology to the humanities, but also to business. Uh, and, you know, like an Elon Musk, you know, he wants that edit button. He was a printer who liked uh, figuring out the errata, changing things, saying of his own life, here's the mistakes I've made in my life, and here's how I'm going to correct my mistakes. So that notion of being innovative, middle-class inventor who becomes the most successful American in so many fields, and like Leonardo da Vinci, he wants to know everything you could possibly know about everything knowable. So I think he's an inspiration for our time to give us not just confidence as a nation, but a little bit of humility, too, to say, and how can we make ourselves better? He was always fighting for self-improvement. Hey, Ken, I, all those things I listed, I, I left off things like yeah. he created a volunteer fire department. Yes, right. um, no, he created, uh, discovered electricity and found a way to find all of these things. What, what, what were the most striking things that, that you walked away with after studying him more in depth? Well, as you say, the list could go on and on and on and on. Um, I love him. I think it, Walter is exactly right. Uh, he's the greatest diplomat in American history. Know him, know us. If if uh, he hasn't delivered the French support for our revolution, then there's no victory at Yorktown. Uh, he also, uh, you know, negotiates the the Treaty of Paris, which is the most lopsided treaty in our history with Great Britain, and uh, gives us our, our our complete detachment from Britain. I think the most important thing for this morning. Uh, um, Becky, is that um, this guy's on the $100 bill, right? The largest <laughs> bill in sort of general circulation. Everybody wants more Benjamins, but it's only kind of half it. He is the model of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, uh, doing well, uh, doing for self. But as Walter said, he tethered that to self-improvement, but he also tethered it to civic participation. So nothing was ever done. All of his inventions were held without patent. So there's no, you know, uh, comparison to so the titans of today. He could have been exponentially more wealthy than he was when he retired in his 40s uh, to pursue his scientific and, I would say, civic engagement with things even more than he already had. That's the important thing. He understands that there's an exquisite tension between what I want the sort of classic American freedom and what we need. He died, after all, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. not the state of Pennsylvania.